Hello everyone. Welcome to our talk and thank you for listening. In the next 15 minutes, we'll talk about why future of platform engineering is application centric. My name is Sahil Nanda. I'm the lead product manager of AppHub and Cloud Asset Inventory products in Google Cloud. AppHub is a new Google Cloud product that is simplifying cloud application management. I'm joined by Srinivas Krishnan, who is a principal engineer and brains behind the AppHub product. Today's session will be structured into two parts. I will talk about why is platform engineering hard and what challenges enterprises are facing in trying to build a platform. Shri will then provide an overview of how application centric cloud creates a golden path for the enterprises. Let's take a look at the evolution of IT over the last few years. Traditional IT involved physical data centers, which uh, for the most part have been replaced by cloud, which provides ease of scale, supply chain management, and physical security. However, uh, the software stack built on top of these physical artifacts still remain fairly complex. DevOps was one attempt to help with that, and it did bring a welcoming change by uniting development and the operations team, fostering collaboration. Uh, this eliminated the slow and inflexible handoff process that existed between the two teams. However, this new model came at a cost. The burden of uh, managing the entire application stack, aka shift left, uh, came down to the single DevOps team, increasing the cognitive load on the individual engineers that are juggling between both application development as well as infrastructure tasks. Furthermore, the number of application team also grew. So the redundancy and inconsistency also increased with that. With each team building similar platforms in, with different tools causing fragmentation, maintenance challenges, Platform engineering emerged as a solution to these challenges. Platform engineering offered a standardized self-service platform, reducing DevOps burden and providing developers with the pre-configured tools, uh, also known as shift down. Uh, this not only accelerates the efficiency, but also ensures consistency and adherence to the best practices. So platform engineering does not replace DevOps. Instead, it complements it. Platform engineering as an approach is still in its infancy and you know, exact semantics are still being defined. Uh, some companies are in advanced stages versus the, uh, the Gartner predicts that yes, you know, about 2026, 80% 20, uh, of the organization will have some kind of platform teams in their organization. So let's see why most companies are not doing this already. Well, uh, building a platform is hard. Uh, let's explore uh, this with an example, e-commerce business you know, which has like three product teams, for example, a front end ads and catalog. They build these product on a centralized platform with shared infrastructure. Now the goal of these uh, product teams is uh, different, right? Like front end, you might want to have like Java with skills around operating debugging or distributed systems, uh, a system that can handle large amount of loads. Uh, so they need a highly available uh, platform team. With ads, they might be writing it in Py notebooks, you know, so they need uh, heavy analytics. So they need to query large amounts of data. So that's their requirement. Versus a catalog team uh, that uh, might be, you know, in the interest of launching new features very quickly. So their requirement to the platform team is, I want to move fast and have frequent releases. So you can quickly see that, yes, it is extremely challenging to meet all these unique needs from the product teams. Now, in order to provide that flexibility to the catalog team that you wanted, uh, to move fast and move quickly, platform team created a custom uh, kind of tool for them or a custom to meet their need. Uh, but what it did as a result of that was uh, it created scaling issues. Now you, because you have introduced two platform teams, so you need a bigger platform engineering team to support these two platforms and that increasing the cognitive load now instead of on the platform teams. Over time, what happens is as ads team take a look at, you know, the custom platform built for catalog and they start demanding a custom platform for them as well for their unique need. Uh, and soon you kind of start looking at that stack and it resembles a lot like the DevOps model. Uh, so is platform engineering like a step backward? Not really, uh, you know, it's what we are really saying is platform, building a platform requires very conscious thinking and does come with a lot of the challenges. Let's explore some of them, but we have heard from our customers uh, based on our collective experience. Uh, there are three major categories of where we have identified uh, the issues, people, process, and technology. For the people aspects of it, it's building a platform requires a very collaborative and product-centric thinking. 
one might have to work with various stakeholders in the company that you know some might have a resistance to the change you might have to help uh, people uh, build the product centric thinking or the skills that they might not have and you might have to work with myriad of stakeholders for their unique needs the process side uh, there is a lot of manual toil and inconsistent workflows that one needs to manage for the platform to work this requires a clear governance and decision making framework uh, the ability to work uh, with outdated systems uh, that requires costly and time consuming integrations on the uh, on the technology side uh, there are a wide variety of tools uh, to choose from and this comes uh, makes it a tedious evaluation process like which tools to choose uh, platform teams also need to keep scale in mind when they are thinking about technology too because as the demand grows the platform needs to be able to make uh, meet those demands and building a scalable distributed system is very hard and uh, last but not the least on the technology side like you know you need to protect your sensitive data and keeping it in compliance with all the different regulations is also very crucial for the platform teams now these are few reasons why it makes it hard to build and implement a successful platform does this mean that yes platform engineering is not the right path uh, not really uh, i i think we strongly believe that yes platform engineering is the right path to take uh, the platform teams and product teams are like two tectonic plates that are moving at different velocities we need a we need some kind of glue that keeps these two teams tied together this will enable like a self serving consistent interface allowing both teams to meet where they are despite the different goals So now I'll hand it over to Shrinivas to talk uh, more about how an application-centric cloud can help uh, implement a successful platform. Thank you, Sahil. So now I'm going to be talking about how application-centric cloud is built and how it can actually help platform teams uh, realize their uh, building of their platform. So what exactly is application-centric cloud? So Sahil talked about the why. Um, The way we think about it primarily is that uh, there is a separation of concerns between people building applications from a platform perspective and the developers actually building the uh, actual core business logic. Uh, organizations usually tend to organize their um, applications similar to bis different business uh, goals, and because of that, each application oftentimes is built to meet certain specific goals that they have in mind the business goals in mind so uh one of the core tenants that we're trying to provide is that we want developer productivity to be easy by making the application self-serving uh to the product teams and the way we're doing this primarily is by providing the construct of an application as a data model that essentially glues the platform side of the world and the product side of the world. Uh this is important primarily because uh the platform team oftentimes sets things like guardrails in place uh but they don't have core knowledge in terms of the actual business requirements or the code that needs to be running within the application. However, there are certain responsibilities that need to be shared. So for example, when you're asking a question of sorts uh from the finops side which is how much what is the cost of running an application? uh you're not actually asking what is the cost of running this entire platform but you're trying to essentially understand what is the cost of running this specific application to achieve this specific business goal traditionally platform engineering has focused on building general purpose infrastructure uh but where we're going with this now is also providing a way for application centric thinking so that it also brings in the developer perspective it thinks in terms of like uh and the tenants that we uh try to build around is self serving so it's focusing on what the developer needs and the platform team uh, the product teams need uh so that they can tailor their individual services and tools to address their specific needs this also reduces the cognitive load on the platform teams because they can focus on what they do best versus building for each specific uh application and product team needs uh This leads to the second point in terms of targeted functionality, which is what I mentioned, which is like you can now target specific applications being developed, and you don't need to provide broad capabilities across the entire stack. And last one we also want to provide is what we call improved iteration cycles or shorter iteration cycles, so that the product teams can constantly iterate within the sandbox that's been provided, and the pro platform teams don't need to have their constant involvement as part of that. So how does that all work? 
So the way we think about this is layered intent. Um, so there are really two layers to this. One is the platform team, which is providing how the infrastructure should be infrastructure resources should be provisioned, providing security guardrails and compliance guardrails as their intent. And the product teams are adding the business logic within it. This layer intent essentially is manifested by an application, which is a secure sandbox. You can think of it as a secure sandbox environment, which a platform team is providing to individual teams. And they can essentially build within this while the platform team under having their guardrails in terms of security policies, having their guardrails into compliance in place. Uh, there are also non-functional requirements, which also allow for sharing. As we discussed earlier, so like in terms of cost and other portions becomes a team sport instead of being the responsibility of an individual layer, which is just the platform team or just the product team. So one way we think of these things being manifested is through what we call the application design center. So the application design center are, goes around this concept of templates. We are all familiar with templates, which come from things like Terraform. Um, the, we, the ADC concept takes us a step further, where we can layer these templates by platform teams. The platform teams can provide the infrastructure setup. Uh, they are essentially creating things like Kubernetes clusters. Uh, they can add multiple other templates in terms of how to create uh, specific um, uh, services that need to get deployed within load balancers and the specific pieces. They can also add Terraform modules uh, within that. The application teams can then take this, uh, product teams can now take this and then use them to develop on top of it. Uh, there can also be templates for policies, which the platform team provides in terms of like, I want only a specific version of Kubernetes across my entire stack, or I want certain, um, I want default and TLS to be provisioned. One thing to realize though, is that intent alone is not enough. It needs to be actually maintained and it needs to be actually acted upon. So how does that all come together? So this is a high level architecture of how we think about it. Uh, at the very top, you can see there are application design center where customers are coming in, the users are coming in, uh, they're defining, they're discovering the predefined templates and the pre-approved templates. And they take those templates and build on top of this. And then they're creating these, uh, putting them into adding their specific uh, requirements are part of this, integrating the CICD pipelines, and then eventually it gets provisioned and deployed. Uh, this is what we call runtime. So runtime at runtime, there'll be different resources that are occurring, different compute, different load balancers. They might be using different databases. All of those things from a platform, which is what we are providing, AppHub, we're discovering them constantly and mapping them to the application template that was already provided. So this is what I mean by maintaining state in real time and maintaining state, mapping the intent space to the runtime space. Things like images, uh, things like what kind of uh, libraries are running also get populated as part of that in what we call an SDLC registry, which is software uh, lifecycle. Policies also are coming through another registry where we can say you want default in TLS, you want things like a specific version for uh, libraries to be present. All of those can get composed and are constantly being evaluated at the application layer. That's what APA provides. Uh, anytime you see any deviations from it, the runtime orchestrator can come in and get you back to state. It can either automatically come you get it back into state or can provide uh, an alert or can provide uh, a signal to the platform team to take action. All of this is, at the end of the day, being orchestrated on top of the graph. So we all of these different runtime uh, resources, all of these software, software lifecycle uh, resources, all the policies, all the resources that that things like databases, secret keys, things like uh, individual pods, are all being maintained at runtime through what we call the runtime graph. So, and we are able to see at the entire linkage, both config-based linkages or traffic-based linkages on top of the runtime graph. And we constantly are evaluating this graph and taking action on top of it. And finally, we expose these the runtime graph and the runtime orchestrator and uh, the registry to build application-centric products. So as an example, uh, there are capabilities that are provided now to the platform teams to build things like their observability stack, which are primarily focused on individual applications. The, uh, we'll show a, uh, a demo of how that can work and how you don't need to think about instrumenting every piece of code, but the labels will flow through the entire system of the application coming from all the way from 
the piece of uh, from a pod or a VM or even a service that got deployed, and then how it's get consumed on the observability side. You can now start building in terms of cost and optimization. You don't need to, when you ask the question, what is the cost of my application? Because of the presence of the runtime graph, you can create, you can get just that sub-segment of the sub-graph and do forecasting on top of it. Uh, you can also do improved auto-scaling and quotas because it now does not even think in terms of individual resources, but is thinking of the entire application. So you, uh, it's not just auto-scaling at the pod level, but it's also taking into account things like databases, thinking of quotas in place, so that they all expand and contract as part of a single application. And finally, we talked about things like governance, like OZ policies and authorization policies, which can be maintained uh, through the system. So the platform that we are building uh, from GCP, the APA platform, is meant to provide these capabilities on, built on top of the application data model for platform engineering teams to take advantage of and improve the way they are offering their uh, uh, the platforms internally to their internal customers. So with that, I'm going to hand that over to Sahil. Thank you, Shri. Now let's take an example of how the application as a concept once created can power up the application-centric products as an experience. I'm in my Google Cloud Console where I go to App Hub, the central hub for defining the applications. And I can see that, yes, I have created three applications where I've also defined their attributes. Let's go into the application and I can see various services and workloads that are part of that application and also the attributes defined at an individual service or workload level. Now let's see how the observability can become application centric with that concept. Now that those attributes that were defined on the application uh, might have been defined by the application development team or the product teams but someone who's looking at it from a platform perspective is able to see the, the different observability information across all of the applications, but you can come into your existing views and filter it by the metadata or the attributes defined on that individual application level by the product team. And you can filter it based on, let's say criticality in this case, as an example, you can see that, yes, how an information from a product team is transferred over to a central platform team or a central observability team in this case, and how these observability systems have become application-centric. Thank you.